A chair is still a chair, even when there's no one sitting there. But a chair is not a house, and a house is not a home. A room is still a room, even when there's nothing there. But a room is not a house, and a house is not a home, when the two of us are far apart. Hal David and Bert Bacharach. about how I made my small home a sanctuary. Now it has nothing to do with the color of the walls, the type of furniture, it has to do with attitude. A self-loving attitude that makes your space, your home, a place where you feel cozy and comfortable. The first thing that I mention is attitude. No matter whether you live in a studio or a room or a very small apartment or a small home, find a corner, find a space where you can sit and do something that you love. Whether it's meditation, knitting, reading, listening to music, that space has to be your space where you can go and feel comfortable. Whether it's outside on a porch or in your yard, where you listen to the sounds of nature, where you can put your pods in your ears and listen to music while you are using your sensual eyes to look at everything around you. There has to be a place in your home, no matter how small, where you can go and it's just for you, where you can close out the world and be kind to yourself. The second thing that is really important is that whatever you have around you, try to be sure that it's organized. Now, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I do. I came from a big house. I love books. I like to read. And I have no storage space here. So I have put my books in very unusual places. And down in my living room, I have even stacked them on top of a chest and kind of made an artistic statement of them. You can even put mirrors leaning against the floor. You can put books stacked up in the floor. I once visited someone in a New York apartment. She was a very famous designer. She loved to read. She loved her designing books. And she had books all over the place. But it was organized. They were all stacked in creative piles. And the, her apartment didn't look messy, even though she had a lot of things. So organization is really important. The third thing is to keep it toxin-free. In the morning when I wake up, even though it's hot and we have air conditioning, I open up all the doors and let the air circulate. I turn on the fans and it only takes about five minutes to actually clear out and refresh the air. I do that every morning and then I close them and turn, you know, let the air conditioner do its job but I make a clean, fresh air circulation every morning in my house. And when I clean my counters, I use toxin-free products. When I clean my floors, then there are so many ones that you can get at the department grocery stores, or you can make yourself vinegar and water. 
Uh, I've opened a lot of drains by using baking soda and vinegar and boiling water. So many ways that you can refresh in your home and have it toxin free. Plants. Bring living things into your home. It is really important they clean the air, they make a soft, cozy environment. They're living things that you can even talk to if you want. Plants and living things in your apartment that add color and that add a feeling of being outdoors in your house. Another thing that I love, I love flowers. Here I have a lot of cactus plants. I don't have too many flowers that I can cut, so I have to bring them in the house. But whenever I go to Whole Foods, Publix, or Trader Joe's, or my husband goes, he knows to bring home a nice bouquet of flowers. And you can get baby's breath, and it's only maybe about $3. Anything living, again, you know, for a while, and adds color to your home and softens your environment is really important because in our house we want to stimulate all of our senses, our hearing, our smells, our tastes, our sights. So everything that you do to create that environment in your home is extremely important. Light candles. You can have toxin-free candles, there's soy candles, anything that brings a sensory feeling to your home. It might be a diffuser, uh, wonderful oils that you can use in your diffuser. If you like incense, you can burn incense. Anything that gives your home that wonderful smell, that smells clean and fresh, fresh and it's a, something that pleases you and makes you feel good. I absolutely love candles. I burn them. I have them in the bathrooms. <laughs> I have them in every room of the house. So that when I walk into my home, the aroma of those candles and also my diffuser is still in my house. And it gives me a very warm and cozy feeling when I'm at home or when I leave my home and I come back. Things that I love and things that you love are very important. When I left my house, it was a big house, I had to make really important decisions as to what things I was going to give away and what things that I was going to keep. I made the choices to keep things that meant something to me. Whether anybody else understands it or not is not important. These things are important to me. I brought with me a little ceramic cat with pink stripes. It was given to me by an elderly couple who lived next door to me when my husband was killed. They kind of became my surrogate parents on premises nearby. They were so very kind to me and I have such wonderful memories of their being there next door and being a part of my life when I needed support most. I brought that cat with me. And even though people may look at it and say, wow, what does she have that there for? It's for me, it means something to me. I have my mother's train case that she used to use when she and my father would take train trips. It was her cosmetic case. Remember those leather cosmetic cases and you'd have little pockets and you'd put all your makeup and things, your personal things in there. And it has, um, you know, stickers from where they visited. I have that train case and I'm using it for storage in this small space. But I have that and every time I look at that, it reminds me of my parents and my childhood and how wonderful they really are. These tiny little memories are so important. Your things will be different. Your things that mean something to you will be different. But it is important to surround yourself. Now, I'm not saying clutter. It's important to surround yourself with things that mean something to you 
that bring back fond memories. I have my sons, I've got pictures of my grandchildren, but I have my sons a platinum and gold albums that he gifted me with. When I see those, I think of all of my children and how proud I am of them. These things are extremely important. So things that you love is something that you should do to make your home a sanctuary. Night. Nighttime is a very important time, isn't it? It's a time of reflection, a time of unwinding. At night, it's good to sit in a low light environment, whether your lights are from candles, from the moonlight, from soft lighting in your home, from salt lamps, whatever makes you happy and whatever gives you that feeling of end of the day, retrospective and thoughtful feeling. It is so important. I have low lighting up in my garden. I can go up there at night and look at the moon and think about my day and what I'm going to do tomorrow. And it embraces me. The night embraces me because of this low lighting and ambiance. And I know I'm in a safe place. All of these things are so easy to do to make your home a sanctuary. It's an attitude of self-love. You are giving yourself a place that when you open the door and you walk into your home, you know that it is your own personal sanctuary. Houses. When I think back on my life, the memories that are filed away in that part of my mind seem to be directly related to the places I have lived and what happened within their rooms. Somehow I seem to remember more about those houses and what happened within them in more detail than some other events in my life. Even today, where I live and my environment have a profound effect on how I feel. When I have been able to choose my surroundings, the places where I've been happy have been bright and the windows uncovered to let the light stream in. The other houses in my past that were dark, those I had lived in as a child or when others had control over my life, remain in my mind as representing a dismal place in my existence. Thank you so very much for joining me again today. Look around your house. See if you can make it more of a sanctuary and your own place that is filled with self-love. Be kind to whomever crosses your path. And of course, let's all share love throughout the world. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for your wonderful comments. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.